Good morning. All right. Good <laughs> so, lab four, so lab four, steganography, different from last year. If you had already worked on the web page one, sorry, uh -huh. sorry about that. But I did tell you at the beginning, every lab's different this semester, didn't yeah. I? Weren't you? Okay. <laughs> Files are all up there. We're going to talk about this presentation today. You really don't need the WGET recording. I just left it on there if you want to see how it worked. Okay. Uh, the image you need is right there. Uh, it's also linked inside the PDF. Then the PDF is right here. Okay, now the image is 258 megs and it's actually right there. Okay, we're going to be using that in a minute. Um, but uh, before I get down to it, let's talk about what the heck steganography is. All right, so we're going to talk about steganography and digital watermark. I did not make this, I stole this. Um, I made a little bit of it. Okay, so what is it? We're going to talk about definitions, we're going to all kinds of stuff about it. It basically stands for hidden or covered and to write. So, kind of a cool thing. They relate to cryptography, but it's not really cryptography. We're really just hiding things is all we're doing. Okay? All right, ancient science, they had all kinds of different ways to do it. They would shave someone's head, tattoo the, the, the secret message on it, let their hair grow back, send them across to wherever they were going, shave it again. That's how they, So, lots of... Different ways of doing it, smuggling secret messages in wax. I mean, they had poles they would wrap messages around, Chinese balls, all kinds of different ways they did it. Now it's much easier. Okay. So they go on to, there's even, is this the one about, uh, you know, every other word? And they also talked about using, um, oh, the name, is it in this one? It's not in this one. But there was just lots of different examples. I'm not going to go through all these because we need to get to the hands on part of it. But Bunches of different ways to do it. You can see here, this is Francis Bacon, isn't it? Um, yeah. You'll see that the N's and the E's are different. So it says, uh, Francis Bacon's own examples in this cipher in which plain text flee is concealed under the cover text, stay until I come and get you. Just by the handwriting. You notice the N's are different, the E's are different, so on and so forth. So depending on which one you read, one said flee, one said stay until I come and get you. Um, anyone watch Prison Break TV show? I think it was in season one where he got a letter from his son, and if you read down the right-hand column, there was a message embedded in it. You know, so, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Okay. All right. Other ways, uh, back in World War II, they banned knitting instructions. They banned blank paper. Isn't that, that's kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of funny because we, we pay for paper here at Rose State. But if we send copy work to the copy shop, it's free. So basically, if we copy our own work here in our copy machine, we have to pay for the paper. If we send it over there, it's free. So I said, why don't I send over a blank piece of paper telling them to make me 500 copies? Okay. Would, that be, would that work? But they didn't like my idea. But I could have said, oh, it's a forensics project. There's a written message hidden there. <laughs> could do that. But okay, they banned blank paper, they banned X's and zeros, crossword puzzles, list of grades, so on and so forth. So they were really freaking out way back when. Okay. The ultimate, here's the Nobel Peace Prize. Medals were actually melted down, then sent across in what Agra Regia they called it. They resolved, and then they were able to get it out later. So obviously the medals at that point were melted down, but you know, they got the gold across. Okay. Computer science, we really no longer need all this stuff. We can just do it with computers. The best known is for digital pictures. Now, there's also something called Easter eggs, Trojan horses. Anyone ever seen those? There's a lot. Of, I mean, the old Excel, like Excel 97, had a flight simulator built into it. I was actually hired to teach an advanced Excel class at Gordon Cooper one time. I'm like, what could I possibly teach? Well, I didn't realize that the people knew nothing. But, so I went in there, day one, I, you went to a certain cell, put a certain value, and instantly turned into a flight simulator. You could literally fly around. It was kind of cool. But a lot of different programs have stuff built into them. When I worked at the uh, software development flight at Tinker, we, uh, they, they wrote a piece of software using the command, in the command center over there, and it had some really bizarre ether egg, Easter egg. We went to this certain place, clicked on this three times, and typed an L in this block, and then did tab, tab, it was, you never get to it, it popped up some stupid thing. But, uh, you know, supposedly Office 2010 and beyond no longer is included any. I don't know if that's true or not. But in the past, there was lots of them and lots of different things. Okay. 
All right, different methods. We can use substitution, replace, you know, repeating characters, replace something with something else. We could all inject stuff over top of it, or we could generate stuff over it. And we're going to see some examples, okay? There's something called the least significant bit. It's kind of like, um, you ever watch Superman 4? Richard Pryor stole half a penny from everybody. You guys need to watch the movies. Because every time I reference movies, no one gets them. But he basically was stealing, you know, if your paycheck come out to, you know, you know, $100 and, you know, 52 and a half cent, he stole the half a cent. Didn't hurt you any, but that adds it up after time. The least significant bit is like that half a cent. You don't really need it. But you can actually embed stuff in it. Especially when we're talking about graphics. I mean, it's not really going to change the color or the picture at all. One of the images we made for you guys today actually popped up and warned us, whoa, gave us too much stuff, so we had it slightly modified the image. No, it didn't modify, you know, we couldn't see anything different in it, but it, I guess, did. Okay, so there you go, they can actually embed something in there and change the bits. So. All right, here's a, an example. They're actually taking this, whatever, boat and hiding it inside of a flower, but the pixels, you can't tell the difference anyway. Okay, so yeah, they're you know, our naked eyes can't see that good. It's just very slightly different. All right, other ways, you can actually embed stuff in waves, you can embed stuff in MP3s, executables, TCP headers. Yeah. Um, the don't fragment flag, or the urgent pointer inside of a TCP header, not really used all that much. So what if we embedded stuff in the don't fragment flag? Or in the, you know, urgent pointer, very easily. Yeah, we'd only be getting one bit across with each packet, but those could add up. So lots of different ways you could do it. All right, um, there's some examples here. I, mean, I don't know if these, I'm not even sure if these are going to work. Let's try one of them. They did work in the past. Oh, is it still here? Come on, where are you? One final note. Yeah, yeah, where is it? Is it gone? No, I don't want to download the darn zip file. Forget it, we're not doing that one. How about, let's try this one. Run the applet. Oh, you can't, you gotta download it. Oh well, it's not gonna work for us, sorry guys. Yeah, that, but we are running Java here. But I'm, basically, if you know anything about a web page, if I put some text and put a space between them, you can see the space. But what happens if I put 20 spaces between them? You still only see one space, unless it's a non-breakable space. This actually just embedded a whole bunch of spaces in it, and you can actually recover a message using that. So it's kind of cool. Um, I might have another one on here. Oh yeah, this is a good one. We're going to show you this one here. This is kind of kind of important. So I'm going to encode a message. Roy is dumb. Okay, y'all see that? Roy is dumb. I'm going to copy this so we, we know the exact way I typed it with five characters at the end. Code. And I get some text, some spam. Okay. So what I did in the past, actually, one of my final exams, I sent this to my students. I said, do whatever it says. Oh, I literally had people, please remove me from your list. I mean, they could have come back here and just, easy. Okay. Now, so let me show you. If I click decode... Instantly gives me Roy is done. Now I'm going to go back in here again. I'm going to remove this period. See this one little period right there by com? Deleted one period, okay? Decode. Totally screwed it up. Y'all see that? Totally gone. So let's put the Roy's done back in there. This time we're going to add just one period. Totally killed it. So you know I didn't screw with it. So this time we'll come on, get back in there. Come on, stop. I put a period there, but delete the period. So I really didn't change it. And decode, and it gives me the message. So I mean that's kind of a cool thing. So you never know. Maybe that spam you're getting is actually a message. But since I tell you that, it's not going to be on your final day. But it might. 
You never know. You never know with Ken. She sends a secret message, that's whether it will or not. Send it as like an official message. There you go. Yes, just send it as John Kramer. All right. Other things, they can do it in waves, they can do TCP time, they can do art, they can, all kinds of different ways they could do it. Okay? It says the process of analyzing data for hidden content. Now, did you notice that I modified it in just a teeny bit and what happened to it? Changed everything. Totally killed it. So the hash. image. What? Changes the hash. Exactly. It changes yeah. everything. So basically, the stuff I give you, you know, if it's changed at all, you're not going to be able to get it. Okay? Erasing, decoding, detection, it's all different. Erasing is easy. You modify it in one way. Modify it anyway. Modify it one bit and it's gone. You can never get your data back. Okay? Detecting is the hardest part. I'm going to show you how to do that and how to decode it. I'll show you how to do all that. It's not that hard, but we have tools to do that for us. I'm giving you the tools. So. Okay. Detection is the most important. You've got to be able to find them. If you're law enforcement, you want to find them. When I was at a University of Tulsa, the cybercrime unit came in and they were talking about this known child pornographer they had. And they analyzed all the stuff, could find no pornography. And what they did find is a whole bunch of DVDs of golf courses. Because he was an avid golfer, had all these pictures of golf courses. Well, every one of them had child pornography embedded in it. So they started analyzing those, and sure enough, they found they were in there. So you can use it for all kinds of stuff like this. Okay. Watermarking. This is actually a picture from Intel Gymnast. I used to host their website. They would give you images, but you can see across the middle it says gymnast. Okay? Now, the image is still, it's kind of like the prom proofs you all get, or graduation proofs you get. Here you can see it, but it says proof across it, or some stupid thing across it. So, we're not there to really, we're confidential, confidentiality like it says. We want you to know, we want to know you got it from us. I mean, you could remove that, but it would be pretty darn hard to edit that image to remove it. Okay? Napster, all those do the same thing, okay? Do not impair it. Sometimes I do want you to impair it, but do not impair it, but just gives us the ability to you know, put some data on top of it, okay? They talk about which one's hard, which one's difficult. Watermarking, very hard to remove, stuff like that, okay? So, it's kind of cool. A lot of software out there. If we go to this link here, maybe, it's, uh, hmm, that's not really a good link anymore. Stego Archive. Click here. This might not be good. <laughs> it might not be there anymore. Okay, there it is. So there's a bunch of different tools out there. Lots and lots and lots of them. The tools we're using are old. Really old. But they work. Sometimes. So They will crash on you. Guaranteed. <laughs> they crash, open it back up again. That's all I can tell you. There's, they haven't been updated. So, But lots of different ones you're welcome to play with there if you like. Okay? Uh, so there's lots of good ones there. Um, software. We're going to be... Yeah, we're going to demonstrate the different software to use, and they're very teeny. They'll fit on a floppy disk. Okay. It says, why should we bother to do that? In 2002, they said, Al-Qaeda operatives have been sending hundreds of encrypted images that have been hidden in files on different or in digital photographs on the auction bay or site eBay. Okay. So, you never know. Okay. So, they say it's been happening. Here, this picture is no longer there. Actually, eBay has changed the way they do it. Back in 2010, what they started doing to prevent that was whenever you uploaded a picture to eBay, they would edit it. You know, I talked about you changing it anyway. Well, if you look at that car, there's actually a camera down in the corner. Okay. Now they do it where you can't, there's no camera added, but still, they're editing the file slightly. So all the sites edit them now. That way you're not hiding anything in there, so kind of cool, okay? So the authorities are also investigating, uh, investigating Al-Qaeda for possibly hiding stuff on pornographic websites. Now, last semester, a student said he was going to contact the ACLU because I was prejudiced against Al-Qaeda or against Muslims. I'm not, okay? It's funny because I actually had a Muslim student here 
who during that time of Ramadan, wherever they got to pray all those days, I would even give him a classroom to go pray in between classes. It wasn't a big deal. But he was like, yes, you're a racist against Muslims, and I'm going to contact the ACLU. I'm like, what? Whatever. Yeah. I hate everybody equally. Exactly. Yes. So. Equal All right. So, um, steganography, kind of cool. And here's a bunch of links to it. You're welcome to it. Again, th this is an old presentation. Some of them work. Yes. Is it possible to possible to embed malware in uh, like a JPEG or an audio or video file and it execute when not, it's read? Not really, because a JPEG is not executed. Okay. Right? Um, the way a lot of people get malware that way is, you know how Windows hides file extensions? Right. Well, they'll actually take an executable and call it, you know, myprompictures.jpg.exe. Mm -hmm. So it hides the .exe. You get the file. Ooh, the prom pictures. You click on it. Huh. It's not working. Oh, it must be a bad picture. You don't realize that you already executed the malware. So it's not really that it's embedded in it. It's actually an executable just named as a JPEG. That's what y'all know. What I'm talking about how how do file extensions work? Yes. Actually, um, a little while back there was this uh, exploit for Android phones. I think it was called Stage Fright. A little while back, they're daily. No, the interesting <laughs> thing about this one was so oh, because, another exploit. Because when you get um, an, like a, a multimedia text message, it automatically downloads in the background. They were able to exploit this um, this vulnerability in the uh, Android image reading software, right. whatever you call that. Right the images. So when, it, when your phone downloaded a text message, it automatically opens the image, and then the image has an exploit for that, and then it infects your phone. Well, and there was also one for uh, iPhones. You got to take that to even reboot your phone. So yeah, I don't know. There may be a way to do it. No, I don't. I'm not aware of. So, all right. There's uh, all kinds of links there. Again, I did not st steal this. I just borrowed it. If I understand, both of those actually have to do more with the uh, primary operating system that they were sitting on. Anything that you can turn into a bitstream okay. and hide in a picture effectively, but it's getting the data back out, that's a huge pain. And unless people are willing to make some sort of encoder for the sake of making a decoder for the sake of making some sort of exploit, that's Now that Roy is done ranting, I'm going to continue with my lecture here. Okay. Up in D2L under Software Needed, there is a folder called um, Software Needed. Okay. Um, actually, let me... Pause for a second here. Okay, so I re-downloaded the program. Um, actually, while I was paused, you didn't see this, but when you're downloading this, your browser might tell you it's not safe because it actually has tools on there that are used to exploit different things. Okay? But it's fine to use. You need it for here. I'm going to move it here. Now I'm going to right-click. I'm going to 7-zip, and I'm going to say extract here. I'm going to go in here, and there we go. That's the exact one that's online. That way it hasn't been modified in any way. So now, inside here, there's a picture right here. This is Harmony Christian Church in Chata. I used to go to this church, so I just took a picture of it one day. Well, I hid Mindy in the picture. Okay. So like we can zoom in. Anybody see Mindy anywhere? She's not behind the tree. She's not in the doorway. She's not over here. She's nowhere. Y'all agree? There's no Mindy there. She's not up on the roof. Y'all agree Mindy's not there? Define Mindy. Define Mindy. A female girl, about 16 at the time. Okay, must be the one taking the picture. No, 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 no. Okay. So in here, I actually gave you these two files, the exact commands you need to run this correctly. Isn't that nice of me? No. Okay. So I'm going to now here, here's what y'all are gonna do. You're gonna go in here and you're gonna type up, you're gonna click on steg detect. No kidding. Last semester, I've been running steg detect for four days. The screen's still blank. Dude, you can't run it by clicking on it. It will literally stay there forever. Literally click on that four days later, it says I've been waiting on it. No, no, you cannot click on it. Do not click on it. What you do is you run command prompt. Then I'm going to change directory into that. Now, I don't know if you know this. You can actually click up here. Oh, it's on my D drive. Oh, it's still on D. Okay, good. Click up here. I'm going to copy that path. Paste it into here. Paste. 
And it's wrong because I got an extra slash in there, but. Dude, what the what the hell? Oh, go to the folder, right click. No, that's no, we don't do that. That's stupid. Okay, okay. Stupid idea. <laughs> stupid idea. Shut up. Okay. So now I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go edit paste. So I'm pasting the inst basically that command right there. That command. And I'm hit enter. And what it did was it detected a file called churchwithmindy.jpg has something hidden in it with JP hide. So far so good. Sometimes this tool gives you a false negative. Sometimes it gives you a false positive. Aren't you glad to know that? <laughs> so you can literally use steg break all by itself without detect and you're fine. The problem is steg break could take a lot longer. So now I'm going to show you, now let me explain, and the instructions, by the way, are right here. There's steg detect, here's the executable, and the PDF for it, it tells you all the commands. You can read to your heart's content. So now I'm going to go in here and take this one, and I'm going to go over here and paste right here. And it comes up and says corrupted data. It always says corrupted data. Don't freak out. Don't call me and say, I can't get it to work. It says corrupted data. No, there's always corrupted data. But it did say it loaded one file because there's only one in the directory. And you see churchwithmindy.jpg has something hidden in it with the JP hide version 5 and the password is church. Y'all see that? Password is church. So, recording this, right? Yeah, I'm recording it. So now we got this wonderful tool that crashes all the time. I'm going to accept these wonderful terms, and I'm going to open a JPEG. And I'm going to get this church with Mindy. Now I'm going to seek. What was the password? Church. Okay, and I'm going to save it out. I'm going to call it file.txt uh, file. Maybe it's a text file. Let's find out. Okay. So I ran my program. Now i got a file over here called file.txt. Well, heck. I better we better quit. What kind of file is it? How do you know it's a JPEG? It says right at the top, the signature, JFIF. You, for each one of the files, I made sure they were all different types this week. So you had to figure out what types they were. You know, I had to make you do some work. So we should, we should make them all a text file first. Uh, and you can make them anything you want. Just saying that one of them's a text file. <laughs> you can very easily open up your X editor, dump it in there, and you can see it's got the JFIF and the FFD9 at the end. So you can say, obviously, this is a JPEG, so I'm going to go over here. And since we know it's Mindy, now you're sure no one saw Mindy. She was quite evident in the picture. She was quite large. See, she was on the bench. Y'all missed the bench. Okay. Who's that guy? That's her dad. Okay. But, so the point is, you can embed, we embedded a 43 image, 43K image into a 300K file. Now let me show you how the tool actually works. Okay. I found this new website today. It's kind of cool. It's called Google. Yeah. Oh, um, you know the, the lecture last week when I said, you know, don't call me about Cali? Three emails and one phone call. What, I got an email Saturday. I got an email Sunday. And they got an email Monday morning. I've been working on this Foremost since Saturday. I can't seem to get logged into Foremost. I can't do the project. I'm like, seriously? I said, I'm not going to tell the answer. Did you ask Google? A minute later, boy, do I feel stupid. I mean... <laughs> Somebody sent out a group email through D2L or something. Did somebody? Yeah, I, I got an email from somebody. It's not hard to find. I mean, I got an email from one of the classmates asking about the, the GWID number, and I'm just like, did you not read Yeah, I sent email? an email. I sent like 12 emails, didn't I think? Well, I screenshotted the email and then sent it to him. <laughs> so here, did you read this where he said ignore that one? I know, I got a call just recently about that. But I, I, I do try. Okay, here's just so the, my process is. 
when I find out there's an issue that affects more than one person, I do try to tell everybody. Quite frequently. That's why you get all the emails. Class, and too. sometimes I even send it to the wrong class. <laughs> so you might get an email from a totally different class saying, oh, when you submit the quiz this week, it might not be your class. You might not even have a quiz this week. So, okay. So let me continue on. But I'm going to go in. We're going to find a picture of the sun. Now, in Google Images, you can go over here and click on Images. Okay? And on our search, search tools, you can actually find something halfway large. We'll go 2 megapixel. So you all like this picture right here? Is that a good picture? Yeah. All right. So we're going to take this picture here. I'm going to right-click on it and save image as. I'm going to put it in my desktop. In forensics. And we're going to call this the sun. Spelled without a slash. Okay. Now. So now if we open up this didn't I save it there? Saved it right there. I'm moving the Stego tool, so it's easier to use. There's the picture of the sun. Wow, that's kind of small. Teeny tiny sun. Okay, we need a bigger one. You didn't download the actual picture, you just downloaded the Oh, did I? I was testing you. You all failed. Alright, so now we have a larger sun. Ah, now we're much bigger. So if I open this up, you can see it's the picture of the sun. So I'm going to use this awesome program over here that will crash on you. I'm going to open JPEG and I'm going to open up the sun. Okay. This time I'm going to hide something. And I'm going to use just church because I know it's in there. It's a strictly dictionary attack on the password. So Now I'm going to embed in there. Let's put a uh, PDF in there. How about this PDF? I'm going to say save JPEG as, I'll call it sun2.jpg. Done. So now I go back here to my folder, and I have sun and sun2. There's sun2, there's sun1. Sun2, sun1. See any difference? It's two. Really, they are changing. If you look at the top, you can see the name change. And there's sun1, there's sun2. Okay. Let's look at the size. This is the funny part. This is Sun, which is 2451K. Sun 2 is actually smaller. So the image with something embedded in it is actually smaller than the image without something in it. Isn't that amazing? You know, uh, the, I don't know exactly how the tool works, but it looks for redundant data and stuff like that. When I was working on my bachelor's degree, um, this friend of mine was there you know, t doing the degree with me, and he was a really sharp guy. He wrote some code for a zip program, kind of like WinZip, PKZip, 7-zip kind of program. It could get the file down to 1K, any file, by looking for redundant stuff. I would you know, look for duplicate stuff. The problem is you couldn't undo it. <laughs> I mean, he actually presented it in class. He said, this is my idea. A great idea. I mean, sound, everything. But, he's like, but the problem is you can't undo it. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, look for all the ones and replace them with a single one. Great idea. That's, you know, so yeah. But you can see it's smaller now. So now I'm going to go into my program. I'm going to close it out. I'm surprised it hasn't crashed yet. Watch. This might be the first time it doesn't crash. I'm going to accept these terms. Actually, you know what? Let's check and see. I'm going to run steg detect again. And sun2 has something with JP hide. Okay. I can actually adjust this, sen this is the sensitivity level. I can adjust it. Now it's negative. Y'all see that? Liar. So, so a five makes it work, but I will positively tell you one of your files, no matter what sensitivity, will still show negative. Aren't you glad to know? No, you're not. Because you're not going to ask me, okay, you're still going to ask me that question. One of your files is uh, negative. What's the highest sensitivity? 10, I think. If I'm unsure, there's a PDF file that tells you all about it. Now we're going to go over to Steg Break. And you will see Steg Break takes considerably longer. Yeah. Um, somebody a couple of semesters ago actually wrote a script who ran all this and automatically copied all the files that were 
positives, potential positives, into a folder, then run stake break, and then output the relay. He said, go. Get back the next day, and it was all done. So, wow, still going. Hopefully I did spell church correctly. Is JP hide, is that some sort of flag? or? No, it's a program. Okay. Yeah, it's an actual program. Wow. So, now, if you hit Control-C one time, it will tell you where it's at. So you see it's currently at 18%. Does it stop it? At 100. Now, if I do Control c twice, it'll stop it. Okay. Now, if I do it one more time, you'll see now we're up to privately 7. I swear I spelled church correctly, didn't I? Well, obviously not, because I think your word list is up to Okay, let's stop it. Let's see if we can get anything out of it. <laughs> so I, op I open up Sun. No, it's open Sun 2. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Now we're going to seek for something. This is going to be file 2.pdf. No, it was actually church. File 2.pdf. So I have no idea why that's not getting it. But luckily for you, and basically the first time in history, I verified every single one I gave you. And they all work. Isn't that neat? Isn't that cool? You like that idea? I don't know why that's not breaking it. That's weird. Okay. Now, um... Can I give you the instructions file? Now, the rules, we haven't got to John the Ripper yet, but the rules are actually John the Ripper password cracking rules. Okay? Which we're going to get to next week. And the words file is actually a dictionary. 47, 45,400 something words. Okay? Uh, years ago, when I ran this, when I first started teaching this, um, I forgot to include the word in the dictionary. <laughs> and I had students running it for days. Your words are in there. <laughs> I verified it. Roy was in my office. We verified every one that worked. And we even found one that I forgot to put the answer in. But it's there now. Can we fix it? <laughs> so everything is in that dictionary. Yes. Everything's in there. Now, uh, I'm going to go back into the assignment real quick. We're still relying on you guys. Now, um, okay, so let me, let me explain. So here's the different tools. It's an individual lab. Do it yourself. There's where you get the image from. That's the same link that I put inside of D2L. I just copied it here. So I gave you the MT5 hash so you can verify you downloaded it correctly since some people have an issue with that. Now I'm telling you receive, retrieve the images from the image you're going to get there and use the FTK image or any other tool you choose. Utilize the tool listed above to... To take break and gain access to the files in question, you're free to use other tools if you want, but you don't really need them. Okay? Submit the answers on the quizzes. When you get the extra credit, it's worth 25%. So just, just answer, put it at the, at the end of the quiz. Here's the questions. Okay. So, who said the quote that was similar to, seems that every, two year, or every 10 years or so, an evolution must take place to keep Batman up and current with the times? The answer is in a file got to find it. And I was nice enough to change the quote so Google won't find it. <laughs> but you still got to find the file anyway. How much did you change it? Then I said where was the file stored? Which file was it stored in? So even if you got the answer on Google, you still don't know what file it was in. So you might as well find it. Okay? So where was it stored? Then what item was donated at the Purim auction? Which file did you find that in? Or according to Liam... What scene was the most awkward to shoot? Put that one in. Give me the exact quote. What file was that in? Uh, what was the original line that got changed to It's a Trap in Return of Jedi? It's a target. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, the answers are in the files. So don't spend time searching Google for the answer. It's not going to help you. You still need to know what file it's in. It's just my way of knowing you found the file. How many years was a Tony Stark movie made in development before it finally happened? Put the number there. Again, what file was in? What was the password used to break the, the file under Tony? What was the file under Spock? The file under Luke? The file under Katniss? And the file under Bruce? And then where, which directory were they located in? Okay. The la you'll notice the points vary. Up here, up to question five, they're worth 18 points each. Down below, they're just one point each. So they're not equally weighted. Is there a bonus question up 
Yep. Yep. What was the extra credit? Kent's projects are perfect. No. Kent's projects are never perfect. All right. Um, now, I want to bring up FTK Imager. And I'm going to open an evidence item. I'm going to open up an image. I'm going to open up an image in lab four. This is the, actually the real image you're going to use, believe it or not. Serious? <laughs> Who's serious? No. Uh, <laughs> now, this is an older. No, this is the new one. Let me download it again. Maybe I. Wow. Seriously? No. Already got it. Download. Is it downloading? One minute left. I'll pause until we get done downloading. Let's resume. I'm going to actually just try to open this up from downloads. Can I do that? Add evidence item. Image of a file. I don't know if I can or not. We're going to try. Does it actually put it in downloads? Come on. <laughs> Are you serious? I verified this beforehand. It's got to be a version of my FTK imager. You know what? We're going to download the new FTK imager. I'm going to pause this again. Those of you that are watching the recording, I'm now installing FTK Imager. Which version is this? 3.4.2. Do you know if that's the same as the, the live version? I do not know if it's the same as the live version or not. I, I'm not sure on that. Okay, so we're going to launch Imager. Come on. Yeah, it looks totally different now. Okay, add evidence item. Then I'm going to do an image file. Then I'm going to go to my source. And I'm going to go to the one we just downloaded. Where'd it go? There it is. Yes! It was just the imager. Make sure you got the new imager. Because I created with the new imager. Obviously, it changed something. So my file was good. Thought I messed up there for a second. No, it's good. It works. Okay, so look here. You'll see in this image, you'll see we got Bruce and Katniss, and Luke, and Spock, and Tony. Okay? Like, you can go in here and you can say, oh, look, there's some images. Can you guess what Bruce might be, the theme of that? Batman. Very good, Black, ba Blackman. Okay. okay, we have some images all over the place. You might want to find them all. Some are on the desktop. Ooh. Okay. I'm not responsible... Okay, years ago when we did this, whoop, oh, sorry. Years ago when we did this project, we used Animal Planet. Y'all seen Animal Planet, okay? Well, I don't know if someone watched the old recording from a couple years ago, but what do you see on Animal Planet at National Geographic? Killing Na and mating. You see nature. Well, it turns out there was two horses making a baby horse. A student was very offended. <laughs> I'm like, it's Animal Planet, seriously? So... I didn't go through all these images. There might be a bad word. I don't know. But okay, please, don't freak out. It's just an image. <laughs> okay? So we got Bruce. Then we got Katniss. So what, what movie could that be? Anybody? Fire or something. <laughs> Hunger Games. Oh, look. There's all the pictures from Hunger Games. Oh, guess who that is? That's Liam. He made a quote. Maybe you need to know the answer to that one. Probably not. Okay. Um, Luke. What do you think Luke might be in? Star Wars? Let's check. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Boy gave me a bunch of images for a Batman. They were all Star Wars. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> I'm also not responsible for the accuracy yes, of so these queries. I can't, yeah, things. Luke, this is your mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot of memes in here. Don't waste all your time going through the memes because they're kind of funny. Go through all the memes. I, totally I went through half the folder and it was fantastic. Okay, then Spock, <laughs> what could Spock be? Star Trek. I feel like I use it a certain phrase every time. 
Oh, no idea. <laughs> okay, then we got Tony Stark here. What do you think Tony Stark might be? Iron Man. <laughs> All right, so you had some different themes. Not like prior years when you had to find like one file. You have to find one in each now. Plus, that's great. So, yeah. But uh, you'll find it. It's, it's in there somewhere, I promise. So only one of the images has the... There's five in this. Okay. There's five. Read the questions, and they might even tell you where to look. For instance, Liam's question might be in which folders? Liam. In the Katniss folder. Hunger Games folder. Probably Jody. The Hunger Games folder. <laughs> okay. So, everybody okay? Well, that, that might offend somebody. Let's get off that picture. I don't want to offend anybody here. You never know nowadays. Whoop. Oh. Oh. <laughs> See if we can offend anybody else. Some of these are looking pretty good. See anybody else see anything offending, offensive? It's kind of corporate. What is that? This one, uh, <laughs> I'm offended. We don't have bowling listed here. It's all Stark. I'm offended by the order and by the by vowels. All right. Office. So that's your project. Make sure you download the latest version of FTK Imager off of the site because obviously it matters. Okay. I didn't know it did, but it's weird that it's not backwards compatible. Mm. They changed something in it. I don't. Look at it. But yeah, download the latest version of FTK Imager. Now you can you can export it with other tools. You can open an end case, you can open in regular FTK, you can open it wherever you feel like. We have had an issue with our FTK license dying quite frequently. What it is is our licensing server keeps shutting off. That's so just the service. The service, yeah. The license the service on our server keeps stopping, which is it starting to start right back up, and I don't know why it happened. This is less than five thousand files. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, FTK Imager opens it fine. And you can literally go in here, and I can go to uh, Tony Stark. I can go to my pictures. I can do select all these, and I can right hand click and say export file. Done. Well, I'm pretty sure I could actually go to the beginning and export all of them at one time. So I'm just saying. It's <laughs> not mind, that big. You keep in mind, the stake, stake, uh, the breaking process requires respectively passwords. And the easiest way to make the steg stuff work, put all the files in the directory with the tools and then run it. You might be able to specify the path from the tool. I, I can't guarantee that, though. So, and you can actually put the tool in multiple directories, run it multiple times. Now, this is on your virtual machine if you want it, or the, you can download it here and use it as well. So, so we downloaded the steg tools off of our website. We downloaded the imager and the image, and it all works fine. Everybody agree? Took some time, but we got it to work. So, all right. I think that's all for tonight. You got a week to do this one, as always. Next week, the pain starts. Isn't that when we start with JFK? That's when. <laughs> <laughs> yes. JFK is next week. And then we're moving on to Lincoln and then Clinton. That's when we co ourselves. No. JTR next week. Welcome to